It is a true pleasure to welcome back to this program my next guest. About to present what I know is the opening of a full evening of magic when he is appearing in America. He needs the assistance, I'm warning them in advance, of a few people from the audience. And we are going to provide them, but they're really not friends, they are true volunteers from the audience. Will you please welcome the one and only Mr. Harry Blackstone! <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome. Well, here's a little something I know some of you have seen before, but if not, I invite you to watch, and watch very carefully. You see, it's designed to fool you. It has to do with this bird in a cage, a budgie. And while you're watching, this bird will disappear right from the tips of my fingers, and you'll not see where it goes. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> there you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, since we have just a moment... I heard that remark. Did you happen to hear what the gentleman over here just said? He says, up your sleeve! <laughs> you did say sleeve, didn't you, sir? What you <laughs> just for that, I'd like you to feel both of my sleeves, sir. Please feel them all the way. That's fine, all the way. The other one? No, don't wipe your hands on the coat. Just feel the sleeve. <laughs> Underneath my coat, madam, would you feel around and tell me what you can find? <laughs> and what do you find? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? <laughs> realize you were a critic. Tell you what, for those of you that weren't watching quite carefully enough, or for the one or two that may not have known what to watch for, give me a moment of your time. I'll step back into my office, get another cage and another canary, and I'll do it again. What? <laughs> This time, I'd like to invite someone else to hold on to this cage and canary because both the bird and cage will disappear while you are holding it. Now, I see there are quite a few young people around here. May I invite some of the children to join me for a second? Come up here, boys and girls. Hello there. I thank you so much for coming up. May I impose upon you to move to the side just a little bit so the folks can see at home? And we'll have each of you help me out in a special way. What is your name, young man? Peter. Beg your pardon? Peter. Your name is Paul. Peter. Oh, Peter. Oh, why didn't you say so? <laughs> you put your hand on the front of the cage. That's fine. And you, son, put your hand on the bottom of the cage. Young lady right here, what is your first name? Bellamy. Bellamy, you put your hand on the side of the cage. Right on mine. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> the other young lady, you put your hand over here on this side. That's fine, thank you. What is your first name? Madeline. 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 Oh, well, I'm mighty glad to know you, Madeline. And you, son, put your hand on top of the cage. No, put the clean hand up there. <laughs> and your hand, son, on the back of the cage. And yours on the top of the cage. And yours on the front. Yours on the side, right over there. Yours on that side. You put your hand on that side over there. Don't put your fingers inside. He bites. That's fine. And you put your hand on top. The young lady there on the back of the cage. Yours on this side. And the little lady there, just push in like you would at home. You put your hand up there, too. <laughs> Are you busy? Come on in here. Put your hand up. That's fine. Put your hand right up there. You each have a hand up there, touching it, feeling it, knowing that it's there. Now put another hand on the opposite side of the cage. And you... Hop! Well, that's the way it goes. Thank you very much. Thank you. And back to your seat, boys and girls. Thank you very much. <laughs> At this... At this time, I'd like to borrow a gentleman's handkerchief. In fact, I'd like to borrow a white handkerchief and one that's still folded, if you please. Does anyone over here have a handkerchief? Anybody here? Uh, do you have a handkerchief? Oh, ah, your, is this your handkerchief? No, it's not mine. Oh, it's not yours. Whose is this? The well, gentleman there. Would you mind standing a moment, sir? I'd like everybody to see the man that sends a boy to do a man's job right there. <laughs> the handkerchief, a pocket handkerchief. And the question before us, it's a question that has been pondered by philosophers literally for centuries. And that question is, when is a knot not a knot? And the answer? Well, who cares, really? Do you know how to tie a knot? <laughs> you sure do. Well, I'm mighty glad. Then you tie the ends together and make a real knot out of it. You do it yourself. Tie the ends. As tight as you wish. After all, it's not our handkerchief, is it? <laughs> pull it good and tight. Pull. Don't grunt, just pull. A magical knot. A mystical knot. In fact, this is a knot that will untie itself. Watch. See what I mean? And now, I would like... 
like to invite each of you and you to take a trip with us away from this land of reality into the land of spirits, spooks, and goblins. Because I'm about to change this handkerchief, your handkerchief, sir, into a ghost, a spook, a spirit, into a real live ghost with muscles. What? <laughs> An empty cabinet. Ah, there, killed it. You know, when you kill a spirit, the first thing you've got to watch... Oh. <laughs> a little dance music, maestro. Studio, don't remove that knot from the handkerchief because if you do, the spirit could escape. If you see, oh, sorry, if you see what I mean. Thank you very much, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention.